I want to uh, talk to you about one thing and, and just one thing only. And this has to do with when people ask me, you know, what, what do you do? And uh, to which I usually respond, I do computer music. Um, now, a number of people just stop talking to me right then and there. <laughs> and the rest who's left have this, usually have this blank look in their eye. And as if to say, you know, what does that mean? And I feel like I'm actually depriving them of information by telling them this. Um, at which point I usually panic and spat out the first thing that comes to my mind, which is, I have no idea what I'm doing. Which is true. That's usually followed by a second thought, which is, whatever it is that I'm doing, I love it. And, uh, and today I want to, well, uh, share with you something I love and also why. And I think we'll begin with just this, uh, this question, you know, what is computer music? And I'm gonna try to do my best to provide a definition. Uh, maybe by telling you a story that kind of goes through some of the stuff I've been working on. And, uh, and the first thing I think in our story is gonna be something called Chuck. Now, uh, Chuck is a programming language for music and uh, it's, Open source is freely available, and I like to think that it crashes equally well on all modern operating systems. <laughs> and uh, instead of telling you more about it, I'm just going to give you a demo. OK. By the way, I'm just going to nerd out for like just a few minutes here. So uh, I would say don't freak out. In fact, I would invite all of you to join me in just geeking out. If you've never written a line of code before in your life, do not worry. I bet you'll be able to uh, come along on this. Um, First thing we're gonna do is to make a sine wave oscillator. And we're gonna call the sine wave generator Guh. And then we're gonna connect Guh to the DAC. Now this is kind of the abstraction for the sound output on my computer, okay? So I've connected myself into the speaker. Next I'm gonna say my frequency is 440 hertz. And I'm gonna let time advance by two seconds through this operation. All right. So if I were to play this, you would hear a sine wave at 440 hertz for two seconds. Okay, great. Now I'm going to copy and paste this, and then just change some of these numbers, 220.5, 440, I shall leave it as that, and 0.5, and 880. By doubling the frequency, we're actually going up in successive octaves, and then we have this sequence of tones. Okay. Great, now you can imagine creating all kinds of really horrible single sine wave pieces of music with this, but I'm gonna do something that computers are really good at, which is repetition. I'm gonna put this all in a while loop, and you actually don't need to indent, but this is purely for aesthetic reasons. Uh, it's good practice. And, uh, and when you do this, that's gonna go on for a while. It's gonna, in fact, it's probably not gonna stop until this computer disintegrates. And I can't really empirically prove that to you, but I hope you'll believe me when I say that. Um, next, I'm gonna replace this 220 by math.random2f. I'm gonna generate a random number between 30 and 1,000 and uh, send that to the frequency of me. And I'm gonna do this every half a second. Let's do this every 200 milliseconds. 100. All right. At this point, we've reached something that I would like to think of as the canonical computer music. This is, to me, the, uh, the sound that mainframes are supposed to be making when they're thinking really hard. Like, it's, th it's this sound, you know, it's like square root of five million. And so, you know, is, is this computer music? Yeah, I, I guess by definition it's, it's kind of computer music. It's probably not the kind of music you would uh, you know, listen to cruising down the highway, but it's, 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 a, fun, it's a foundation of computer-generated music. And uh, using Chuck, we've actually been building instruments in the Stanford Laptop Orchestra, based right here at Stanford Center for Computer Research and Music and Acoustics. Now, the Laptop Orchestra is an ensemble of laptops, humans, and special hemispherical speaker arrays. Now, the reason we have these is so that for the instruments that we create out of the laptop, we want the sound to come out of somewhere near the instrument and the performer. Kind of much like an acoustic, traditional acoustic instrument. Like if I were to 
play a violin here. The sound would naturally not come out of the PA system, but from the artifact itself. So these, um, these speakers are meant to emulate that. In fact, I'm gonna show you how we um, actually built them. The first step is to go to Ikea and buy a salad bowl. This is an 11-inch Blanda mat. That's, actu that's the actual name. And I actually use one of these to make salad at home as well, I kid you not. And the first step is you turn it upside down, and then you drill holes in them, six holes per hemi, and then make a base plate, put car speaker drivers uh, in them, along with amplifiers in the enclosure, and you put that all together and you have these hemispherical speaker arrays, add people, add laptops, you have a laptop orchestra. And uh, you know, what, what might a laptop orchestra sound like? Well, let me, uh, let me give you a demonstration of one of about 200 instruments we've created so far for the laptop orchestra. And what I'm gonna do is actually come to, over to this thing. This, is a, this thing I have in front of me is actually a, used to be, well, a commodity a gaming controller called the Game Track. All right. This thing actually has a glove you can put on your hands. It's tethered to the base, and this will track the positions of your hands in real time. It was originally designed as a golfing controller um, to detect the motion of your swing. That turned out to be a rather large commercial non-success, at which point they slashed prices to $10, at which point computer music researchers said, this is awesome. <laughs> we, can, we can prototype instruments out of this. So I'm gonna show you one instrument we created, of one of many, and this instrument is uh, it's called Twilight, and it's meant to go with this metaphor of uh, pulling a sound out of, out of the ground. So let me see if this, this will work. put it back. And then if you go to the left, right. Sounds like an elephant in pain. <laughs> um, this is a slightly metallic sound. Turn up just a bit. It's like a hovering car. Uh, this third one is a, uh, a ratchet-like interaction, so let me turn it up. So uh, it's a slightly different interaction. The fourth one is a drone. Finally, uh, let's see, this is a totally different interaction, and uh, I think you have to imagine that there's this giant invisible drum sitting right here on stage, and uh, I'm going to bang it. <laughs> so there you go, so that's, uh, that's one of many instruments in the laptop orchestra. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and when you put that together, you get something that sounds like this. Okay, and so uh, I think from the experience of building a lot of instruments for the laptop orchestra, and I think from the curiosity of wondering, what if we took these hopefully expressive instruments and we brought it to like a lot of people, plus then a healthy bout of insanity? Like put those three things together, led to uh, led to me actually co-founding a startup company in 2008 uh, called Smule. Now Smule's mission is to create expressive mobile music things. 
And uh, one of the first musical instruments we created is called ocarina. And I'm going to just demo this for you real quick. Um, so ocarina is a kind of based on this ancient flute-like instrument called the ocarina. And, uh, and this one is a four-hole English pendant configuration. And you're literally blowing into the microphone to, uh, to make the sound. And there's actually a little chuck script running in here that's detecting the strength of your blowing and also synthesizing the sound. And vibrato is mapped to uh, the accelerometer, so you can get All right, so let me play a little, uh, little ditty for you. Um, a little Bach. And this in here you'll hear a little accompaniment with the melody. The accompaniment actually follows the melody, not the other way around. And this was designed to, you know, let you take your time and figure out where your expressive space is. And uh, you can just hang out here for a while for a really dramatic effect if you want. And whenever you're ready, And on these longer notes, I'm going to use more vibrato towards the end of the notes to give it a little bit more of an expressive quality. Ah, that's a nice chord to end this excerpt on. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all are very kind. Um, so, I think a good question asked by Ocarina is that, you know, is this a toy or is it an instrument? Maybe it's both. But for me, I think the more important question is, is it expressive? And at the same time, I think creating these type of instruments asks the question about the role of technology as it plays for how we make music. You know, apparently, for example, not that long ago, like only 100 years ago, it's not that long the course of human history. You know, families back then, used to make music together as a common form of entertainment. I don't think that's really happening that much anymore. You know, this is before radio, before recording. In the last 100 years, with all this technology, we now have more access to music as listeners and consumers. But somehow, I think we're making less music than ever before. I'm not sure why that would be. Maybe it's because it's too easy just to hit play. And while listening to music is wonderful, there's a special joy to making music that's all its own. And I think that's one part of the goal of why I do what I do, is kind of take us to the, back to the past a little bit, right? Now, if that's one goal, the other goal is to look to the future and think about what kind of new musical things can we make that we don't perhaps yet have names for, that's enabled by technology, but ultimately might change the way that humans make music. And uh, I'm going to give you one example here, and this is Ocarina's um, other feature. This is a globe. And uh, down here, you're actually listening to other users of Ocarina blow into their iPhone to play something. This is G-I-R from Texas. R-I-K, I don't know why it was these three letter names today. Uh, Los Angeles, they're all playing pretty like somewhat minimal music here. And the idea with this is that, well, the idea is that technology should not be foregrounded here. When you've actually opened this up, the first thought is that, hey, you know, there's somebody somewhere out there playing some music. And this is a small but I think important human connection to make that perhaps the technology affords. Um, as a final example,
And perhaps my favorite example is that in the wake of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami disaster in Japan, a woman reached out in one of our singing apps to try to get people to join in to sing with her on the version of Lean On Me. Now, in these apps, there's this thing that allows uh, any user to add their voice to an existing performance by any other user or group of users. So in some sense, she's created this kind of global ad hoc chorale of strangers. And within weeks, thousands of people joined in on this. And you can kind of see people coming from all around the world, and all these lines are converging on the origin where the first rendition of the song was sung, and that's in Tokyo. Um, and this is what it sounds like when there's, a, when there's a thousand people. This is a thousand voices. <laughs> This computer music. Was that computer music? Yeah, I guess so. This is something that you really couldn't have done without computers. But at the same time, it's also just human. And I think what I've essentially answered so far is maybe why I, I do this the stuff that I do. And let's just finally return to the first question, what? is computer music. And I think that the, the catch here is that, at least to me, computer music isn't really about computers. It is about people. It's about how we can use technology to change the way we think and do and make music, and maybe even add to how we can connect with each other through music. And with that, I want to say this is computer music, and thank you for listening. <laughs>